This is IMAX Film. Now, this isn't going to be another video like the countless other ones on YouTube explaining what IMAX Film is about. I've even made one in the past, I'll link it below, and I'll link a bunch of the other ones that go more in depth about what the technology is and its advantages. But the purpose of this video is more of a PSA on my part to encourage anyone who hasn't seen a movie projected in IMAX film to go and see Oppenheimer when it releases on July 21st. The reason why IMAX film is such a big deal, apart from the fact that not many movies are shot in the format, is that it's actually getting a film print run. There have been a handful of movies in the past shot with this technology, like First Man, Warner Woman 1984, The Last Jedi, Nope, even from last year, all utilized IMAX film cameras, but they did not get a theatrical distribution in IMAX film. Interstellar holds the world record for having the biggest IMAX film release to date. More than 40 theaters in the US and Canada are showing Interstellar in 70mm IMAX prints that require two projectionists because of the size and complexity of screening the large format print. And back then, it was thought that it would only go up, but unfortunately that number dropped down to about 37 for Dunkirk. And then because of the pandemic, Tenet only had eight theaters that showed that format. The pandemic not only resulted in Tenet being the lowest run of IMAX film to date, but it also caused a lot of those theaters to close down permanently. The number of theaters for Oppenheimer is 30, which isn't that much less than the 41 theaters for Interstellar, but it's still not a good sign. And given how rare it is to shoot on IMAX film, and even more rare to project it in true film, that number is definitely going to go down in the future. It takes six to eight hours to assemble the nearly three hours of footage onto a single reel. It weighs about 600 pounds, Interstellar is 49 reels. Now, when a lot of people refer to IMAX film, they also refer to Christopher Nolan's movies, and for good reason. What bus drive? <laughs> The Dark Knight was the first movie to use that format, and they shot 28 minutes of the movie in IMAX film. It's always super fun taking someone who's never been to a true IMAX theater for their first time and just seeing their reaction to when the first image is presented. I remember when The Dark Knight first came out, and when that opening scene starts, that slow push in on the buildings, it really envelops you and sucks you in. It takes up your whole field of view. Most true IMAX screens range from six to eight stories tall, and having that amount of information fill your eyeballs in a stadium seating auditorium, there's nothing that can replicate that experience. And since then, he's only gone up and up and helped advance the technology even more. Oppenheimer will be the first movie to use black and white IMAX film stock, and for Tenet, they engineered the mechanics of the camera so that the film stock could run backwards. I think we did a lot of things that you haven't really seen. We wanted the IMAX cameras to run backwards. Shooting on IMAX film is such a big deal because one, it's super expensive. The cameras are super loud super heavy, almost around 240 pounds. The fact that Universal is putting so much work into making sure that this movie can be seen in this format is a big deal because they've used this technology before with Jordan Peele's Nope, as well as Damien Chazelle's First Man. Both those movies used IMAX film for key sequences, but none of them got an IMAX film print. Whereas with Oppenheimer, it will have an actual film run. So when you say that you saw a movie on IMAX film, you will have actually seen a movie on IMAX film. And a lot of people have seen movies in IMAX, a lot of people may have seen movies projected on film, but once again, if you see this movie in IMAX film, you can say confidently that you saw a film. You saw a movie in IMAX film. Not a lot of people can say that. Didn't need a charge. Four, three, two, one.